Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got here in this review is the Sigma 56mm f1.4 DCDN lens. Now this lens is a fantastic portrait lens. The quality is really good. Overall image quality, exceptionally sharp, even wide open at f1.4. The lens retails for $480 US, but it's currently going for about 430 from what I've seen. So it seems like that's the stable price at the time of this review. This lens is optimized for the crop factor cameras like the Sony a6400, for example, which is what I'm recording with right now using the 56 millimeter Sigma. So you can get a good idea of what it looks like when recording. The camera's about six feet away from me and it works out to about 84 millimeters effective range when you factor in the crop factor. So it's about an 85 millimeter lens. Now because it's optimized for the crop factor cameras, the lens itself is much smaller than the full frame E-mount lenses. So it doesn't need to cover that full frame sensor size so they can actually make the lens way smaller. The autofocus works excellent. It's very quiet, very smooth. You can't really hear it at all in video. And the transition effects you can get with video is phenomenal. In addition to that, it has a nine blade circular aperture diaphragm. So the out of focus rendering is very pleasing to the eye. And when it's wide open, the bouquet balls look nice and round. For example, as you'll see in the lab testing, this lens only weighs in at 9.88 ounces or about 280 grams. So it's extremely lightweight overall considering the f1.4 max aperture speed. So the aperture does range from f1.4 to f16 at the high end. The minimum focus distance on this lens is about 1.64 feet or about 50 centimeters. So you can get relatively close to your subject, you know, like for flowers and portraits and things like that. So the background at a focus is remarkable. It's really good for, you know, food photography. Portraits in particular, it's ideal for portraits in my opinion. This is an exceptionally good lens for that. And you do have to get a little bit further away from your subject to get a full body shot, but not far enough where you can't communicate with your subject effectively and, and things like that. One downside to this lens I noticed is it does have some fairly significant distortion. I'll give you a closer view of that in the lab testing. I'll show you with the distortion on and off using the Lightroom lens profile correction. And you know, it is notable, but if you're shooting raw quality, it's notable, but it's, it's very easily correctable. Other than that, the optics on this lens are absolutely phenomenal, as you will see in the lab testing in particular. Now this lens, as far as build quality goes, the focus ring is buttery smooth, very, very nice design on that. It's a large focus ring, which I like, so it's easy to grab. The lens does not have a manual focus autofocus switch on the side of it so you will have to do that from inside the camera if you like to use manual focus a lot it has a really nice lens hood has a pinch style lens cap design and it's got a nice metal bayonet on the back so the optics are really good and the build quality is really good especially for the money the lens does not have image stabilization built in so if you're looking for that this lens doesn't have it and the a6400 which i'm recording with right now also does not have the image stabilization on the sensor. So if you really need the stabilization, you're going to have to look at the A6500 at the time of this review, which has the built-in sensor stabilization. I usually use a tripod, so it really doesn't matter too much in my case. But if you're using the A6400 and you know, you're know you in a low light environment and you do want that image stabilization, this really isn't the lens for you. You'd be better off looking at like the Sony 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, for example, which does have image stabilization built in. That lens is very affordable as well. Be sure to check out my review of that on the main website. All right, so you can see it in my hand here. You can see just how small the lens is. It's very compact and lightweight. It's got this nice pinch style lens hood here. And you can see in there the aperture diaphragm. It's very nice, well designed. Looks really cool too. And the lens hood here, I just put that, that put that on there. You can see what it looks like like that. Again, it's a very nice lens and this is buttery smooth. Buttery smooth manual focus ring. Let's take the back off here so you can see the metal bayonet. Really nice design there.
Hey guys, so here we are in the lab testing out the Sigma 56mm f1.4 DC-DN lens. And up here in the top left, you will see how I had the camera set in case you're wondering and you're curious, you know, what the camera's set to for whatever given test I'm talking about. Same thing with the real world sample photos. Just remember up here on the top left, you could pause the video and take a look if I forget to mention it or something. So in any event, we are looking at the lab scene here. I have some lights in the background and there's another light over here to the right that's even further away, just so you can see how the lens renders the scene. So at f1.4, remember um, I did mention there was some significant distortion. I wanted to show you that distortion here. If you look at the top of the frame, you can see the curvature on the color chart I have here. See that? And you can also see this circuit board kind of has a curvature going on. Now watch what happens when I enable the lens correction. So that is the significant distortion I was talking about. It's very easily correctable here in Lightroom though, as you can see. So at the end of the day, not that big of a deal in my opinion, but it's certainly worth um, noting because it is fairly significant. So in any event, at f1.4, I just wanted to zoom in here and show you the sharpness. And it's fantastic, wide open, very, very sharp lens. Really impressed. I honestly didn't expect it to be this sharp at f1.4 all the way to the corner. You can see up here, even in the corner on the circuit board, the letters are extremely sharp and there's no fringing. There's no purple fringing, no green fringing. It's exceptionally good quality, um, fantastic quality actually, especially for the money. So I'm just going to go through here and show you how the scene renders. Just keep an eye on the bouquet balls in particular as I go through the apertures. So here's f1.8, here's f4, f5.6, f8, f11, and here's f16. So you can see the bouquet changes quite a bit and it renders quite nice wide open at f1.4. Sorry about that. Here's f2.8. Moving on to the minimum focus distance testing. So here I had the lens at the minimum focus distance, which is about 1.6 feet or so. And you can see the background bouquet is butter. I mean, it just blurs out really nice. And if I zoom in on the quarter, you can see the sharpness is exceptionally good at f1.4. So let me zoom out and I will show you how the scene renders as I stop the lens down. Here's f1.8, here's f2.8, and you can see the sharpness and contrast did increase pretty significantly from f1.4. I'll just go back. f1.8 is really good. f1.4 is noticeably a little bit softer, though. You can see it tack up that little bit at f1.8. And then again, it tacks up a little bit more at f2.8. But also, the depth of field is getting larger as well. Don't forget. And I'm at the minimum focus distance. So this is f4. And here you can see how the bouquet balls are, start, are starting to octagon just that little bit, like you could see that cornering effect. Not too bad though, still looks really good in my opinion. And here it's a little bit more noticeable, but if you zoom out, it still looks pretty darn good. And you know, most likely you're not going to be using the lens to get a bouquet effect when you're stopped down like this. You're more likely going to be at an f2.8 where it looks much more round. I really like this one because you could see how it makes these cool overlapping renderings. This I really like this new lab scene I got going on. But anyway, f1.8, you can see it looks fantastic. Nice bouquet ball blur. And at f1.4, again, very, very nice overall. All right, so here we are looking at some real-world photos. And here's my girl, Layla. She was swinging a bat. She's getting much better from camp and everything at doing the autofocus and things like that. So anyways, just a quick shot here. And I will zoom in, actually, just to show you the detail. And you can see it's exceptionally good. Really, really sharp. This was actually in JPEG mode. And up here on the top left, you will see the camera settings. I was actually testing the A6400 in JPEG mode, so that's why I was shooting in JPEG. I pretty much exclusively shoot RAW for the most part. Now here's just an example of a flower, and you can see the black background bouquet rendering is just phenomenal, and the flower detail is exceptionally sharp. You can see all the little, tiny little, uh, you know, hairs on this flower. It's unbelievable. Super high quality lens, and that's at f2.2 so it was stopped down just that little bit and here's just a my dad cut a limb off a tree here and was hitting his head when he was mowing the lawn and the background bouquet is exceptionally good as you can see 
Here's Jace hanging on the branch, and you can see the house in the background, how it looks. Another one of Layla, super high contrast scene, and you can see just that sharpness is killer. And with the Sony a6400 and the IAF, the camera was just automatically choosing the eye when it sees the face, and it pretty much nails the focus every time. Phenomenal. Look at this one. F1.4. Just look at that. I mean, that is exceptionally good quality in my opinion not the greatest facial expression but she was just messing around make she knew i was taking her photo here's jace and again just look at the lattice in the background and that unbelievable sharpness real world quality is fantastic all right i'm just going to move a little quicker through these now i gave you some close-ups so you can see another flower shot a couple more this is actually looking at my dad's rim on his truck so this is a car, you know, truck tire on the right here that I focused on. And you can see the chrome rim bokeh ball effect that you can get. It looks pretty darn awesome in my opinion. Door handle on his truck, same thing. Get a really cool effect. Another flower. Headlight. The grill on my mom's Jeep there. Cool bokeh rendering, you know, depth of field fall off test really. Just holding the wiffle ball in my hand, holding the camera in my other hand. And here's Chase's, you know, spiral in his hair there. Just a rock. Thought looked pretty cool. My dad's truck logo. Here's some, uh, just a tree showing you a depth of field fall off type image. Here's shooting downward at a bowl of these little egg candies. Thought that looked pretty cool. And here I focused on the bowl just so you can see that depth of field play you can get with a lens like this at f1.4. These are raw quality, by the way. I switched over to raw, raw a while back. And another depth of field shot. Some delicious manicotti. I'm not exactly sure how to say it. Manicotti? I don't know. You know, those big noodles filled with the delicious uh, regatta cheese. Pardon my pronunciation. Here's one of Jace. I actually cropped this in a square for Instagram. Be sure to check out my Instagram account, Sony Alpha Lab. I'm up over there, too. Be sure to, uh, you know, subscribe. And here's just the background out of focus so you can see the depth of field difference. Layla just turned nine the other day, and this was she wanted a brownie cake. So she had a nice brownie cake, some delicious chocolate covered strawberries, and chocolate covered bananas. She got some really neat presents, cool puzzles, and stuff like that. This was the card, one of the cards she got for her birthday. She was just reading it. Here's Jace taking everything in. I focused on the uh, soda can to show you that background separation you can get. Jace got a cool Hot Wheels car thing check out this cool car look at that depth of field i mean the 3d pop that you can get with a lens like this is absolutely remarkable it's one of the reasons i wanted to show you this image here's another one just look at that i mean that is phenomenal separation guys here's another one of layla's cake and I actually went over to this place the other day if you're a reviewer and you are checking stuff out you can also get cool shots like this of restaurants and things like that so i took a couple of photos of some beers and things like that Food photography. Here's a picture of some uh, sliders, Cuban sliders. They were delicious. And here's the menu with the Cuban slider. A couple other beers. And this was just a bartender was leaning on the bar, so I turned left and got a cool picture of his watch. I thought this depth of field looked really cool. These are all raw quality. This place was really good, by the way. Craft Beer Cellar in Warwick, New York. I highly recommend checking it out. We stopped over at this other place called Eddie's Roadhouse. Absolutely phenomenal. They had this uh, delicious mmosa beer, mmosa. It was uh, quite delicious. This is what it looks like. Tasted kind of orange juicy. And this is the equilibrium tap that they had. And you can see that background separation is just killer. I cropped this one square as well for Instagram. And just a couple other taps. And here's one of Layla. I just wanted to show you what a full body street portrait can look like as you can see that background rendering is phenomenal with this lens and it's just a snapshot nothing fancy i wasn't using off camera lighting or anything natural lighting and then i got a little closer to layla for this head and shoulder style shot and you can see that background blur and rendering and 3d pop you can get from this lens is phenomenal this is really a great portrait lens in my opinion now this is actually jace's birthday so this is uh maybe two weeks later after layla's and Jace just turned five. If you guys have been watching me for a while, it's like you've seen these kids as babies and now you see them as, uh, you know, little people. Pretty cool. Jace was so excited. He got some slime. He was playing with some slime. Here he is. He was like, super happy and excited about to uh, blow out his candle. And he had a really nice ice cream cake. You can see here. It's delicious. He was enjoying it. 
And here's my plate. You can see this lens works great for food photography and stuff. And Jace actually got a couple more cool monster trucks. And look at this depth of field. I focused on the right here, the text, and you can see the depth of field is phenomenal. It just, I mean, the separation you can get with a lens like this is so cool. And here's just the trucks lined up. So that is pretty much it for the real world photos. Let's uh, show you some depth of field sample video. And so you can see the depth of field fall off and things like that and the transition effects you can get. And then we will wrap this review up, guys. All right, so here's a quick focus transition test. And right now I'm focused on the quarter. Let me just focus on the dollar bill here. And you can see that nice smooth transition. Now watch what happens when I click on the lights in the background. And I'm just using the touch to focus on the Sony a6400. So now I just focused on the blinds on the back right by that other light. And now if I focus back on the dollar bill, you can see it comes right back. It's really cool, right? Focus on the lights again. You can see it works exceptionally well. All right, guys, well, that pretty much wraps up this review of the Sigma 56 millimeter f1.4 DCDN lens used on the Sony a6400. At the end of the day, the lens is excellent. It's a fantastic value for the dollar, in my opinion. A really well-made lens. It's small and compact and lightweight, so it's a way better option, in my opinion, than using some of the full-frame e-mount lenses because they're so much bigger. They're designed for the full frame cameras, of course. They're way heavier. Like the Zeiss, you know, 55 millimeter f1.8 is actually a fairly compact lens. That's a very good option too, but it's only f1.8 max aperture and it's a lot of money. It's much more expensive. And then there's the Zeiss 50 millimeter f1.4 lens, but that's huge and heavy compared to this lens. So at the end of the day, it's a really, really good option and the image quality is dynamite across the board. The only negative really lens flaw that I saw that's you know significant is the distortion as I mentioned earlier. I highly recommend this lens. I really hope you got what you were looking for out of this review. And please be sure to check out my main website, sonyalphalab.com. And if you guys have any questions, comments, be sure to leave them below and I'll be happy to answer. I have several other articles on Sony Alpha Lab that using this lens, lab testing, uh, sample photos, and of course the highly detailed full written review will be up there. So be sure to check that out if you're looking for more information, more sample photos that you can actually click on, you know, and go through yourself on your own computer or tablet or whatever. Have a great day. Do me a huge favor. Give me a, a give me a big thumbs up uh, below the video. That really helps out. Really appreciate if you do that. And also be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribing to, uh, you know, stay tuned when I pump out new videos. That's it, guys. Have a great day. Take care.